just to do this. We've just received the verdict just literally seconds ago. John Henry Canaspler Jr. has been found guilty by the jury of second degree murder. These areas outlined in pink here, those are where the proposed leases would be. A faculty member was walking on campus through the parking lot and she walked past an old white Jeep and saw a man holding what appeared to be a hunting rifle. Solar panels and propane are great, but in Wyoming, the wind's usually howling just like it is right now, so that wind turbine up there provides all the electricity this home needs. Parents are using technology instead of just a place bed and crayons to entertain their kids. The thermo camera makes the process of determining where to go in a burning building even quicker for a firefighter. And in a burning building, every second counts. News 13's Jeff Platt joins us live from downtown Dubois. And Jeff, what's that damage looking like? Yes, Wendy. Well, it was a bad combination of a fire, the middle of the night, and freezing cold temperatures that led to all of this. And the damage is very extensive, mainly because the entire, the entire roof of the building basically collapsed. I'm going to actually get behind the camera and try to show all of you this. See, if you look right here, you see all that damage there. That's actually not wreckage. That is simply just the roof collapsed inside of the building. You can also see here, that's the back of the building right there. So really all that's standing is the front of the building and the back of the building. Everything in the middle has been more or less completely destroyed. Now there are, a, there's a business to my left that's on the second floor. That did not get damaged as badly simply because the fire didn't get up there. However, there was still a lot of smoke, water, and ice damage. They have a partially collapsed roof. I saw them in there today trying to salvage whatever they could. Now, one other business owner that was in the Main Street Mart told me that her merchandise and a lot of the other business owners' merchandise isn't insured because they're such small businesses and it's such a small town that they just don't have the insurance for it. So replacing that merchandise and really finding a new place to be and landing back on their feet is really all they're concerned about right now. For a lot of them, it, they're still in shock. It hasn't hit them yet. They still haven't really gone through the coping process, but hopefully that will happen over the next few days and they will continue to move forward. We could get all of this cleaned up and they could find somewhere to continue their businesses through these tough winter months for the small rustic tourist town of Dubois. That's all I have for you now, Wendy, so I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. I'm Jeff Platt, live from Dubois. I've been a volunteer of the Grounds Committee since 1989. I was one of the three originals on the Public Relations Committee. One thing is for sure, CFD volunteers are dedicated, but they aren't just dedicated for the week of events. This is a round-the-clock commitment. These volunteers work tirelessly, like I said before, year-round, uh, and especially during the show, they'll probably, most of them will put in 40 to 80 hours a week. But what exactly is it that keeps volunteers coming back to CFD for 20 or 30 or 40 years? It's family. And as Bill Dubois has said, it's the Cheyenne thing to do. And don't think being a part of this family is all glamour. These volunteers get down and dirty. It's amazing what they can do. I can't pay people to do some of the things that I ask my volunteers to do. We have work days where you pull weeds, you, you paint gates. I've probably painted every gate in this place at least five times. Those who run Frontier Days aren't the only ones saving money thanks to all these volunteers. You are too. They couldn't uh, have the price, ticket prices be anywhere close to being reasonable. I mean, if they had to pay people to do all the stuff all these people do, no way would it happen. So if you head down to the fair, the rodeo, or any of the concerts and see a volunteer, make sure you thank them because uh, I know my job is to make sure that they're, uh, they feel appreciated uh, so they keep coming back and doing their job. And I hope the fans uh, enjoy the show well enough to give them that thank you as well. Jeff Platt, News 13, Cheyenne. We often take our health for granted, but one young Wyoming boy never did. Tonight, News 13 shows you Gavin's journey and how he got a new lease on life. This is Gavin Maxwell, a 10-year-old living in Sheridan. Nine years ago, when Gavin was still a baby, his mom took him to the doctor for a checkup. 
the pediatrician was kind of taking forever and I was in a hurry because it was the day before Thanksgiving and he looked at me and said, well, I think you better sit down. Gavin was diagnosed with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, a disease ruining his liver. These pictures show the difference between Gavin's liver and a normal liver. The disease is so bad, Gavin needed to use an oxygen tank and wasn't able to play contact sports. He couldn't play football, so Gavin became a referee. He's always had that positive attitude, even during his frequent hospital visits. He's always been the perfect patient. He looks terrible on paper, but he's just like the perfect little patient that likes to shoot nurses with nerve guns. How are the nurses over there like if you shoot them with nerve guns or leaving them alone? Oh no, they've been getting demolished. <laughs> <laughs> there is St. Louis Children's Hospital, where after nine years of battling his illness, Gavin got a new liver. It was probably the most terrifying, but one of the best days of my life knowing that from this point forward, he gets to be a normal little 10-year-old boy. But Gavin isn't a normal little 10-year-old boy. He's exceptional, and some might even say an inspiration, who wants to use his new liver to help others get the help they need. I want to be pilot for the St. Louis Children's Hospital transport team. Gavin's new liver came from a registered donor who died. The Maxwells don't know the donor's identity, but they have this message for their family. Every time I look at my brother, I will think of you and how grateful I am for your loved one. And that even though you have lost your loved one, their life lives on in my brother. Gavin's sisters are actually using their spring break time this year to fly over to St. Louis and visit Gavin and his uh, mom and dad so they could spend some family That's time. Awesome. High tensions at Casper College this morning. The entire campus was evacuated. They have found a body in the Platte River. The woman accused of burning and suffocating a one-year-old baby will no longer go to trial. 17-year-old Jessica Carnline charged for the deaths of 27-year-old Brandon Avery and 27-year-old Amanda Strickland appeared in Natrona County Court today. News 13's Cody O'Hara joins us live from the state capitol. Cody, how did the governor feel about this year's session? After the break, more and more Americans are finding jobs, but not necessarily finding money and long airline tarmac delays are down that is of course unless you're on a flight with me we've all heard the expression stealing candy from a baby well what about stealing cookies from a girl scout cheyenne and riverton's airports could lose over a million dollars in federal money because of low passenger numbers during the winter months most drownings are due to people or dogs falling through the ice the search continues for a four-year-old girl missing after falling through the powder river ice sunday evening. It's going to be a fantastic weekend and hopefully even the start of a fantastic month. And here we go. Let's see. Is this a good one? That's a pretty good. I give a good wow. score on that one. She even tackled the sheep at she the end. She tackled the <laughs> sheep. She's a winner. Good for her. I'll give him that one. <laughs> well, that's all the news we have for you this afternoon. See you tomorrow.